Hey everybody, I'm Dan McClellan. I'm a scholar of the Bible and religion. Let's take a look at a response to one of my videos. The Bible, for instance, the flood destroyed everything that had the breath of life. So you're trying to tell people when the Bible speaks of the flood killing everything that had the breath of life, it was given a theological summary of when God called life beginning? No. No, that's very clearly not what I'm telling people. There's no such theological summary anywhere in the Bible because they obviously didn't think that was a question that needed to be directly addressed. What I'm pointing out is that throughout the Bible, life is consistently associated with breath. And that when you look for clues to when they understood a person to begin, consistently throughout the Bible, they talk about human life and personhood as beginning at birth, which is why I also pointed to the legal material like we find in Exodus 21 verses 22 through 25, where an unborn fetus is distinguished from a person and is treated more as property than as a person. Through a bunch of different clues, the Bible lets you know that its authors consistently understood human life and personhood to begin at birth. Again, Dan, answer the question, why is it a double murder charge when a pregnant woman is killed with her baby? Because even the law states that life begins in the womb. Uh, I don't recall you asking that question before, but no, it's absolutely not because even the law states that life begins in the womb, because the law states no such thing, because the law does not treat a fetus as a person anywhere. And that is considered a gap in the law when it comes to violence against pregnant women, which is why a bunch of states and then the federal government decided to draft specific legislation that creates a legal exception, where in the case of violence against a pregnant woman that results in the injury or death of the fetus, there is a special kind of offense that is created. And the Unborn Victims of Violence Act of 2001 is the legislation that was created on the federal level. And you can see the first page of that here, where it points out that if someone commits violence against a pregnant woman and it injures or kills their unborn child, then there is a separate offense that is tacked on. And we see starting in line 17, the punishment for that separate offense is the same as the punishment provided under federal law for that conduct had that injury or death occurred to the unborn child's mother. So no, the law does not state that. The law rejects that, but then the law creates special legislation to create this carve out, this exception that says, but if there's violence against a pregnant woman that injures or kills her unborn child, we're going to treat that as if that happened to a person. What a disgusting pig feels a baby kick, feels a baby punch, feels a baby move and roll around and hiccup and feels a baby inside their stomach and say, you're nobody, you are not a life. So it would behoove you to be a lot more thoughtful about your argument and about your rhetoric. And there are several reasons for that. To begin, over 90% of abortions occur before the 13th week. And most women can't feel the fetus moving in their womb until the 16th to the 20th week. So the overwhelming majority of abortions are occurring before anyone is feeling anything move. And abortions that occur after fetal movement is discernible are quite rare. And they're also quite traumatic. They tend not to be cases of mothers thinking you're nothing, you're not a life. They actually tend to be cases where there's some kind of abnormality that it creates a danger to the mother or makes it so the fetus is unlikely to survive out of the womb. So they're very, very traumatic. So people who go through that probably shouldn't be called disgusting pigs. But that brings up another problem with this rhetoric. The consensus view within Judaism for longer than Christianity has existed, is that a fetus does not become a person until birth, until they draw first breath. So you would also be referring to Jewish folks as disgusting pigs for believing that because of the Bible, uh, a fetus does not become a person until birth. And that's particularly problematic rhetoric in light of the other particularly problematic rhetoric you're about to start slinging. Just like John jumped in his mother's womb when Jesus came, he was aware, he was alive, he had purpose already. 
So you need to read your Bible far more thoughtfully because Luke describes that situation as an exception that results from the fact that unlike other people, John would be influenced by the Holy Spirit even in the womb. And so that was the machinations of the Holy Spirit. That was not because fetuses can recognize voices and understand identities and missions before they're even born because they can't. That is just a miracle that is being described by an author as the work of God's Spirit, not because that can be generalized to all fetuses, because it can't be. But I bet you would advocate for killing a turtle egg, wouldn't you, Dan? You and your followers might as well do this, because y'all like killing like Adolf. Life begins at conception. Your college education can't change the breath of God and him stitching us in our mother's womb. Can you believe somebody uses their education to spend their life telling people that babies are worthless in the womb? What a disgusting pig. So you are rather blithely conflating the position that a fetus does not become a full moral and legal person until birth with the notion that a fetus is worthless and is nothing. Those are not the same thing. And as I pointed out, it is the consensus view within Judaism that a fetus becomes a person at birth when it draws first breath. And so to then demonize those folks as disgusting pigs and to appeal to the Holocaust as leverage against those people to compare folks who think that a fetus does not become a person until birth to Hitler is profoundly disgusting.